And this is this is precisely the situation why we say you need three Radwood cars because right now yeah. this one's on the lift. Yeah. The E30 is at a proper shop. Is at a shop. Just doing stuff that I don't want to do. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, and the Volkswagen needs uh, needs strut mounts. I mean, it's drivable, but yeah, that's right. What do you have that's working right now? <laughs> Pickup truck always works. <laughs> it always needs something, but it always works. What are we doing today? <laughs> so, um, about a year ago, I decided to go back to daily driving Radwood, uh, which means that you need to have at least, what, three? Have we determined three vehicles? I think three, three was the magic number. And a shop. And a shop. And, like, no life on the weekends. And a wife with a proper... <laughs> so what we're going to do today is, is uh, take a look at, there's, there's some things that go wrong with cars over time, right? So old, old cars are susceptible to things going wrong. Uh, so a year into daily driving an Acura Legend needs a few things. So uh, we're going to uh, we're going to fix a few things and then keep driving it. Let's get into it. All right, so tires are 2009 vintage. We're gonna need, yeah. need some new tires here. Muffler is uh, starting to fall apart. Um, when was the last time we had this car up in the air? When I bought it. So it's been a year? Going on a year? Yeah, it's been a year. Um, control arms and stuff back here are looking kind of rusty or like, this all looked clean. Um, this side looks a little better than that side. Yeah, well that's because freaking... Winter. Well, winter, and, and Bob never drove it, never took it out of the garage. That, yeah, that's you, true. You yeah. drive this like in the rain and yeah, like yeah. normal freaking use, right? Yeah. So. Here's the concern under here today. If you look up here, it is caked in the grease that should be inside, inside here but is no longer inside here. Um, and this side is actually displaying the same condition. Uh, and that's new. Uh, that's new in the last couple of weeks. It wasn't, it wasn't even like that a couple of weeks ago, but there's, there's all this, all this that is coming out of, that's coming out of the, the axle on both sides. It's all kicked down here. So you see all, all this was clean when I bought the car and it was not, yeah. none of this was like this. Oh yeah, look at, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. And this is this is precisely the situation why we say you need three Radwood cars because right now yeah. this one's on the lift. Yeah. The E30 is at a proper shop. Is at a shop. Just doing stuff that I don't want to do. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, and the Volkswagen needs uh, needs strut mounts. So we have to separate separate this this line holder just to get it loose. Uh, just breaks, right? Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Yep. I gotta say, and then bop it, but yeah. So. Uh, Impromptu. We cannot uh, manual swap an E30 in an afternoon. Also, we cannot put two two axles in an Acura in an afternoon without doing a full brake job. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it just needs a, a heavier hand. It. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That came out. See. Oh. That's the part that's definitely freaking was. There it goes. You're there. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Hot damn. That was. That was special. I hope we learned our lesson there. Yeah. Okay. This is everything you have to remove to do an oil change on your Acura. <laughs> you don't need to take all that off to do an axle unless you're us. 
<laughs> but we are going to use this opportunity to put it back together a different way to try to put the axle in to see if that gives us the clearance we need so we don't have to do the same thing on the other so side. To disassemble the entire front suspension of the car on the other side. That's how it should have gone, I believe. Yeah, I think you're right. So, so we should be able to get the axle in there. Yeah. So let's let's do this. Let's let's find the torque spec for the top, or do you want? Let's not torque it until we get the axle in. Because... Yeah, we might have to end up taking all this back off. Okay. Ooh. Lesson learned. So uh, on the newer cars, you do you take off the top and leave it attached to the bottom. On the older cars. All the way around. All the way around. All right. Way. And then bring it slowly in here. And that it keeps going on. It's probably the battery. Probably All right. Okay. So now there you go. And then. You're good to drive for freaking quarter. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's totally fine. It'll work. It'll work yeah. just fine like that. All right. Haha. Uh -huh. Look at that. Look uh -huh. at that. Wait, wait. Yeah, so in order to get this fork back on, um, force has to be applied to pull this whole assembly down. And then or can you push? You need like four hands. Up? No. Oh, no. No, it needs to come down. Come down. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So. Helping hands. Yeah, yeah, this this requires more than two hands. Got to pull this whole thing. There's probably a better order of operations to do this. Had I not already put this on, I may have been able to do this single-handedly, but the, the whole assembly needs to pivot down. So, and then this needs to be aligned and then this needs to go in. So you need, you need two hands to do this part and two hands to do this part. And I'm not an octopus. Perfect. Oh. Ah. 335 Newton bastards. Um, yeah, there's a there's a whole lot of vibration that is now gone. That, yeah, that was in here. Yep. Yeah, a whole good. lot. Yeah, this is really good. It'll be in better because once you get new tires and get it aligned yep. too, yep. it'll be. So there was a there was a condition when I was braking that there was a pretty violent shake in the steering wheel. That's gone. I, I think those axles have been bad since I bought the car. Probably or very yeah. close. Very close. Very, very soon after yeah. I started daily driving it, they <laughs> the bed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this feels this feels great. So one of the things that I want to get re remedied on this, um, I think I showed you before on this, the steering wheel buttons have all stopped working and the SRS light is illuminated on the dashboard. And that is something called a clock spring. Uh, essentially, it is a ring uh, underneath the steering wheel that provides uh, an electrical connection um, even when the steering wheel is rotating. Uh, so we are going to get that out of the car and we have a, another one that we got from eBay. We'll see if it works. And uh, we've got this procedure here from the Acura Legend Forum. So thank you to the Acura Legend Forums. I will SR5 guy with a avatar of Dr. Evil. Hope that's not, uh, hope that's, that's not some sort of a sign that we shouldn't be using this procedure. Anyway, um, what I have done, because we have to remove the airbag, uh, the steering wheel and the airbag, so I have disconnected the battery and we're gonna, we've let the car sit for about 15 minutes uh, to let all of that, that residual charge um, dissipate while we get the, uh, the trim off of the steering column. So step one, oh, we've got some, some screws to take off here. Okay, we got these covers off of the volume switches and whatnot, and there's a T30 in there. Yeah, those are nice and tight. Nice, they were right. Okay. 
One ring a ding. One ring a dingy. We have to get all of these electrical connections undone because these wires have to feed through the steering wheel. Off. There we go. There we go. Oh, she's got to come off. All right. Three. Three. Okay, while we wait for the passing, the next passing shower to pass, uh, what we're going to do is make sure that this this new unit, this one that we got off of eBay that may or may not work, is centered. Um, to do that, we need to set it up like it is in the car. So this is how it looks in the car. Uh, we need to rotate this to the left until you feel resistance, and I will count the number of rotations. about 1.5 so we're going to call that centered okay i decided that it was going to be easier to do all this with this bottom trim piece off and i found that this car at one point had a keyless entry system so I don't have any key fobs for it, so I, I don't have a keyless entry system, but that's all right. Okay, everything is plugged back in. Still have some cleanup to do, but moment of truth. I 
SRS goes off. Check it out. Booyah, grandma. Okay. Now we just have to find the radio code and we're back to uh, fully functional uh, safety systems enabled Acura Legend from 1992 to continue our commuting adventures in. And thank you so much for watching this episode of TR3 Wrench Time slash Rad Savers. Uh, one year after purchasing an Acura Legend, uh, fixing a few things, and now she's as good as new. We will get back to a TR3 here shortly. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here on something, 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 Wrench Time. Fixing Radwood. Booyah. Uh...